Welcome back to another episode of Talk Dead to Me. I am your host, Johnny O'Dell. I'm the social media manager for The Walking Dead, and this week we are finally back, baby. I know that we've been off for a few weeks. It's mostly due, I'll be honest. We just could not get a guest. They are filming season seven right now, so a lot of them are tied up or busy or what have you, so it has been difficult. Um, Honestly, I am the only one who runs this podcast. I don't have any help with editing, producing, booking. I used to have an intern, Brooke, who was just fantastic, and she was a rock star, but I have a ton on my plate and doing the best I can, so some weeks we're not going to have a guest. Some weeks we are. I apologize for the inconsistency. I hope I know that when The Walking Dead Season 11 comes back, we will be absolutely consistent. But with these fear episodes and World Beyond, it's a little bit more hazy. So this week, I was delighted when Lorenzo Henry, one of the Fear the Walking Dead OGs, agreed to come on the podcast. I have not heard from him since his character died in Season 2. I know he's been in some movies and some other projects, but I was so excited to talk to him. He played Chris. He was kind of a character that people love to hate because he just kind of became more and more anti. But he's such the opposite of that in real life. He is such a lovely guy, and I cannot wait for you guys to listen to this. Let's just get into it right now. This is Lorenzo Henry. You were in Arizona, right? Yeah, yeah. We, I grew up in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, a very normal life, normal kid, big Italian family, um, very energetic, played hockey most of my whole life. Um, you know, up until I got older, acting was sort of like the hobby thing. Um, mm-hmm. so I was a hockey player, first and foremost. Yeah. Um, but as I got older, um, you know, my career sort of took off and things got more serious. So, um, but yeah, I grew up in Arizona. I still go back to Arizona uh, often for holidays to see my family. Um, so yeah, I grew up and then really transitioned to California as, you know, my brother and I started working more around like the age 10 <laughs> in our professional yeah. careers. <laughs> yeah. Um, you started early. Yeah. Yeah. I started very young. Um, but, um, yeah, what sparked that? What was the, what got you into it from hockey to acting? Cause that's a big jump. Yeah. You know, I, I think, I think a lot of it had to do with our energy. We were very mm-hmm. active and energetic kids, my brother and I, um, you know, we were, we were very fortunate to, um, you know, a- as we started auditioning, it, it was, you know, we, we weren't like dependent upon, you know, acting like, you know, some kids growing up when they get into the business, these young child actors, everything is dependent upon that child's income for their family. Sure. Um, which is a lot of the cases, um, you know, our family was in a position where it, it, you know, they weren't dependent upon us and our, and our careers. Um, so we didn't have this pressure behind us um of of booking of trying to provide um so it was really like an organic um mixture of like a hobby and then as i was saying it it became more of a professional uh you know this this is something we can do the rest of our lives as a business um so we're very grateful to be in that position right and you and your brother have both had iconic roles um was there a lot of competition between you two were you like oh why did he get that role and i didn't get this role or vice versa was there any kind of thing like that it's so funny we actually both just put tapes on for a uh, our good friend kevin james has a movie coming out where he's playing sean payton and yeah we know, writer, we know the writer chris he was actually in one of our movies um an audition popped up and david's like i'm getting my audition on tape i'm like no you're not i'm getting my audition on tape <laughs> uh but no 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 there was never you know he david's four years older than me um, so, uh, you know, that's a huge gap when you're a kid. So we were really, really weren't going out for the same roles. Mm-hmm. Um, so seeing him succeed just motivated me to want to succeed. Um, so yeah, no, no real competition. Was your family like hesitant at all about you going in? You said you didn't have a lot of pressure or were they just excited for you? Like, obviously there's a lot of pitfalls, like you said, yeah. when it comes to child actors. So, you know, it's kind of a dangerous game sometimes. Oh man, absolutely. And that's, that's, That's one of the, you know, you see these families move from their states to California and, you know, it's usually, it splits the family apart. Um, And that was, as a young boy, that was probably the hardest thing for me was, you know, my my dad still had his job in Arizona. My mom would fly out to California. We'd stay for pilot season. That doesn't really exist anymore, pilot season. Um, (laughs) We would would stay out for three, four months and then book and then we'd extend our stay. Um, So that was probably the hardest thing on us as a family was the you know the separation of the family unit but you know my 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 parents were super supportive super super supportive of our careers my mom was 
always on set with us, never, you know, never left us um, by ourselves. It was, it was a very, um, like when we do something, me and my brother, we do it as a family. Mm. Uh, and that's, that's something I, I really appreciate and value, you know, I'm even doing some remodeling on my house. My mom's, my mom's there every day, you know, <laughs> what paint should we use? What flooring should we do? So uh, I'm very grateful for the, the foundations my, my parents have really built for us as uh, to, to thrive, to thrive as actors and now producing. Right. What would you say your first like big break was where you're like, okay, this is actually working really well. Uh, um, yeah, man, um, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> I, I, I did Star Trek when I was in eighth grade um, and I didn't wow. realize how big of a franchise I was stepping into. Um, I, I actually almost didn't do the role because um, I, I, it was my eighth grade senior dance or not senior eighth grade dance the weekend I was shooting Star Trek and oh, they had wow. to shave my eyebrows and buzz no, my head. no. And I thought they were just going to like fake it, like, like, like making my eyebrows disappear and like put a cap on me. And I was like, no, <laughs> you know, I'm all embarrassed to be around the girls and stuff. Um, but I think, you know, once I did that and then I started booking a few more, I got, you know, booked some leads in independent films. Um, I was like, man, this could really work the rest of my life. And I, I actually did go to college um, for two weeks. <laughs> and then I booked, and then I booked a movie that I was the lead in. And I had to go to Charleston, South Carolina. And um, all my professors were like, hey, if you if you miss three or more days, you're going to you're going to you're going to get failed out of school. And I was like, you know what? Go and I'm going with the movie. And that was a blessing in disguise because that was around the time my brother and I were forming our company. Um, and the, the, the movie that I did in South Carolina, then the, the guy who financed that movie became our first financer in our company, Novo. So it was like, hey, if I didn't do that movie, then I don't know if we would have been here with our company. So that was pretty cool. So what's it like being sort of, um, you know, having like a big role, especially like in Star Trek, like, does that, do you still feel like a normal kid or do you start like separating almost from your like normal friends? Like, what's that like? That's gotta be so strange. It, it's funny, uh, my, my buddies, when they, when that movie came out, they all went to go see the movie and they took screenshots and pictures of me. Uh, but no, I mean, I, I was really fortunate to go to like a really small school and my, my friends group, my friend group are the same kids that I grew up with. My, my mm. buddy Frankie, like we're still, we're all still really good friends. Um, but even outside of that, like, I, you know, my brother's my best friend. So like we maintained like a very small friend group and uh, still, you know, close friends with several people growing up, but there was no, like nothing got to our heads and nothing got to my head. Um, hopefully it didn't. <laughs> um, we still consider ourselves kids from Arizona. Um, sure. But uh, looking back on it, we lived most of our life in, uh, in California. Wow. That's awesome. Um, that's cool that you like stay grounded and everything. You know, <laughs> I, I, we're trying, man. I mean, humility is really the key to all this. And, you know, like I said, we were very fortunate to have parents around us our whole lives still to this day. So they are that reminder of, you know, you can get caught up in Hollywood and celebrity and fame, being famous and stuff. But, you know, um, at the end of the day, going back home to our family, Sunday, Sunday dinners with our family is like, I'd rather go do that. <laughs> um, you know, uh, it's just those are the things what's most important to you in life. That's that's to me, that's where uh, your true fame should, you, you know, your true attention should be. Sure. Absolutely. All right. So let's let's zoom ahead to fear. How did you first get that audition? I know you've told the story a lot, but for those yeah. who haven't heard it. No, I, I, I love talking about that because I, I totally did not think I was, what's great is I did not think I was going to get that role just because I've, you know, I've gone out, I've tested for so many projects, so many roles that I'm like, you know what, what are the chances of me actually getting this audition? Um, <clears throat> but I went in, I auditioned, I crushed it. Uh, they called me in for a, a, a producer, producer, director callback. And literally right after that, they sent me an offer. Wow. And, which is, which is, I didn't have to test to network. Like it was like, I didn't test against anyone. It was almost like a dream come true. Cause usually the process for an actor is like, you have to test against three other kids. You sure. go in front of like all the executives. It's really nerve wracking. It, it's a terrible process. <laughs> um, and this one on top of that was picked up for two seasons, which wow. as an actor, yeah usually you book a pilot and you hope it gets picked up the series. 
Um, so the fact that it was already picked up for two seasons, I was like, man, what, <laughs> this was really like a blessing. What more can I ask for? So it was, um, it was pretty cool that it, it just happened like that. And then, you know, meeting such an incredible cast, being part of an incredible cast. I'm so grateful for that. Now, I know a lot of times when you're auditioning, especially for the Walking Dead series, they're very vague about what exactly you're auditioning for. So how much did you know? I think your character's name even changed uh, from like the onset to what it actually became. It, I, I knew zero. I knew nada. <laughs> um, they literally, they, they wrote up fake audition sides for me. I, I did so much Googling and research on the show and couldn't find anything. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we, they really didn't tell me anything. I actually, I'm actually really grateful for the producers on, on, um, you know, I, they, they sent me the offer and then I was like, I need to read the pilot, <laughs> you know, cause I was like, I'm not going to sign up for something that, you know, what if there's something that I'm like, okay, this is great, but I don't want to do it. Um, so they, they actually sent me the pilot and the casting director wow. was really awesome fighting for me. And, um, when I read the pilot, I was like, this is incredible. The first, I mean, my, the first season, I just. I was, I'm such a fan of the first season of Fear the Walking Dead and all the, the creatives that were on that series, that, that first season. I, I think it really encaptured um, the genesis of it getting to seven seasons, you know? Yeah. Season seven, right? Yeah. Season, seven. Uh, season six now. It's... Oh, season six. I'm sure it'll be a season seven. <laughs> Yeah, I think that, yeah, they got renewed for season seven, which is pretty wild. So that's got to be like a huge get. I mean, you, your family must have been really excited for you when you got that I mean, oh, the Walking Dead franchise. You know, I didn't realize the platform that the Walking Dead franchise really was. This is like a theme with you, like with Star Trek. Like. Oh, man. Well, the, the, the thing is, like, I, I had no idea. Like, this, the, when it, it really hit me when we went to Comic-Con for the first year and I spoke in front of 8,000 people. <laughs> um that was just that was just nuts you know i you know because you know my brother's done a ton of stuff for disney and like that platform you know that platform's huge and then you go into this universe the walking dead and it might be bigger <laughs> I, i'm not sure uh, yeah I, I don't know the statistics but it's just equally as massive so i'm i'm very grateful for that opportunity of being in front of all those people. One of the most interesting things that I found when researching you is that you didn't you didn't watch The Walking Dead ahead of time. You wanted your character Chris to just kind of be you know you wanted to be authentic. Yeah, yeah, no, we we um, I, I yeah, I mean one of the things that I didn't want to I I think it worked in my advantage from an acting standpoint was not understanding The Walking Dead universe, um, for like the little subtleties when like you first see the zombie like you can play that out so many times as an actor in your head and you don't, you want it to look as authentic as possible. So I think, I think having that innocence of like not knowing this universe and not understanding it unfold on screen also from like a real life perspective, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't do it any other way um, as an actor to understand that world. So, and I think a few of my other cast did the same thing. I think Cliff and um, several, of the, I, I think Frank, I don't think Frank ever saw the show um that checks out yeah that checks out yeah. <laughs> no, i don't even think you watched no i'm just kidding <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, but yeah i don't think frank and cliff and i you know cliff cliff was awesome like he he has a different perspective on acting but um he he loves discovering in the scenes um prior to even looking at your sides um so um yeah I, I, it was just a choice you know it's not it's not right or wrong but that was the choice i went with speaking of cliff you've said many times you look up to him you know he's kind of a father figure i mean he's an icon obviously he's an icon he's been in you know a million different movies what was it like finally getting to work with him and was that your first time getting to work with him yeah, that, that was my first time working with cliff i mean i still consider him a close friend and he he really took me under my under his wings when i first got on set um, and even offset, like we, we became, you know, our families connected. We, you know, we're trying to find stuff to produce together actually. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, so it, it's, it's, he, he, he is a, he is what you call like a true veteran, like just captain of the ship. Um, this, the second you get on set, he knows what he's doing. Um, watching him act, you know, he just, it's like sports. Like when you play against someone better, it forces you to play better. Um, yeah acting with him just sort of forces you to want to be a better actor. Uh, sure. That goes with the whole cast as well. Everyone's so good. Um, yeah. That, that level, um, it sort of just makes you a better actor and wants you to, to do better for the, for the final product, you know? So Cliff is an awesome man. And 
uh, seeing him, you know, book avatars and seeing the stuff he's doing. It's just like, wow. Dude, when are those coming out? I've been waiting. I was like, Cliff Curtis fell out of the helicopter and then into the Avatar sequels. I think I saw him in Hobbs and Shaw, but then other than that, I mean, I'm just waiting on these Avatar movies. I know. I'm, once that drops, it's going to be like the <laughs> biggest thing ever. That James Cameron, he, he must have like patience in his sleeve because I would Bro. be still like tapping my leg, waiting for it to drop every second of the day. <laughs> All right. So in fear, um, obviously Chris is, you know, very, you know, becomes, starts out as a nice kid, a little angsty, but then makes like a whole turn. Was that like, when did they sort of tell you, did they give you a character arc at all? Or do you just kind of read it script by script and you're like, oh, Chris is becoming a little angrier. Like, how yeah, did that work out? <laughs> they kept a lot of the things in, in, in um, under the radar. Um, okay. For, first season, I kind of had a good idea because it was only a six episode season arc. Second sure. season, we jumped into like, okay, this is 16 episodes. It's a lot, a lot longer. So they, you know, they, they really didn't tell you much, you know? Like, <laughs> I would actually, it's funny, the cast and I, and I don't know if the, the Walking Dead cast has this experience as well. I would like go to the, I don't even know if I should say this, but I, I would go. No, to always the, cut it out. I would go to the makeup department because they would get, they, they would have to prep. Oh, they would have to okay. prep for the episodes. So they would get like a three, probably three episodes ahead of all of us or something yeah. like that. And I'd be like, come on, tell me, tell me what's going yeah. on. <laughs> Yeah, are you like, prepping any deadly makeup for me? Like, what <laughs> doing in front of me? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, you know, they, you know, they were they were very gracious when they told me that it was we were eight episodes in, so it was like the middle of the season, and then they called me in um, during like Easter break, spring break, Easter break, and they're like, "Hey, we're going this direction with Chris." Mm. You know, I I I think everyone saw it coming reading the scripts, <laughs> um, so it wasn't like a crazy crazy surprise I, I would say like the only thing that threw me in for a loop was um Ruben Ruben left uh that season he didn't yeah. die but he left that season and <laughs> I don't know how he didn't die I, I know literally set himself on fire I know <laughs> everyone he had a back door I guess yeah exactly whoops <laughs> um so when Ruben left I think all of us were under the assumption that no one's going just because mm. like that big ep character that had to die was sort of left yeah um so i i i, I when they I, when they brought me in to tell me it was my character it, it sort of threw me off just because i was like oh ruben's gone they can't right. they can't kill anyone that makes sense um, so my insurance card went went out of the window oh no uh, but no i mean yeah. it's the nature of the show you know you, sure. it's a zombie show some anyone i mean look at kim i i had no kim idea. didn't even make it unbelievable like i i, I didn't expect her dying even That's like killing Rick off in season four. It's like, what are you doing? Exactly. Yeah. yeah no, <laughs> it's like, what? What? Um, but no, I mean, it's it's just the nature of the show. It's like, sure, anyone could go at any moment. Yeah. What's that exact moment like? So you said they brought you in and they tell you about it. Yeah. Sorry to like rehash. I know it's probably not like the best memory, but no. do you, had they already told the cast or like after no. that meeting, are you like texting Alicia and like saying, yo, I'm off or how does it work? No. No, no. I mean, they, 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 they brought me in, they told me, um, you know, what do you, what do you say? Like, don't kill me. <laughs> um, you know, I, I wasn't like, like fight, you know, like I, I, I just said, I just said, thank you so much for this opportunity. Like I was so grateful um, to be a part of the show. So I was really, you know what I did say? I, I said, please don't make me become a zombie. Cause I don't want to go and make up for like six hours. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so they did respect that. Um, That's nice. Into a zombie, that was nice. Uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, you know, they, they kind of told you to say, not say anything, but then I was like, I'm dying anyway. So I sort of told, I, I you know, I, I told a few of the cast members um, and we had a nice cast dinner uh, with, with all of us, you know, like a little going away party. And um, I went to Comic-Con that year and no one knew I was going to die except I cut my hair. So I think everyone knew my, my my character was going that's one thing oh, I, yeah, I remember that i was like wait a minute yeah that, i i kind of wish i didn't cut my hair just to keep people on their toes um but i couldn't stand the long hair so i had to cut it <laughs> was that uh, because chris had to have long hair or was that just like a personal choice no i yeah i i, I get i never really questioned the 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 producers on that why why yeah. not cut your hair that would have been more of like a rebellious like oh i'm shaving off my head <laughs> um, sort of a thing I, I, that no that, that was not my creative choice i think just because we're in the zombie apocalypse there's no barber around um, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. But um, just progressively got worse. <laughs> Chris's right. hair. It just, it, we, we teased, everyone teased me. It was like the Dora the Explorer haircut. <laughs> uh, that's not wrong. That's not wrong. Uh, yeah, I always wonder about that. Go ahead. What's, have you watched Cobra Kai? Yeah, I love Cobra Kai. Okay, you know, the, uh, what's the kid that plays um, uh, Johnny's son? John, Johnny's... Um, oh, oh, yeah. Um, the, the guy who looks like a Power Ranger. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. He looks like he, ha- he has like that 90s haircut. Yeah, his haircut was sort of long like Chris. I, and I kept on laughing. I'm like, whose hair is worse? His hair or my hair? <laughs> if you're long head. Yeah. That, should, that would be a fun poll, like a side that- <laughs> All right, I'll make that. that you know, I, I run the social media, so I might as well. Um, make it yeah. happen. Yeah. yeah, I wonder about the haircuts. Like Negan uh, in the current Walking Dead, he'll have like a you know a, a one and a half shaved side with like you know gel. And I was like, who's doing this? Who's yeah. who's shaving Negan's head? I don't. Is he doing it himself? Does he have a razor? I don't. Well, I don't we, know. we actually talked about we we did talk about that a little bit. Now that I think about it, like no one's supposed to look pretty in this. Like uh, in yeah. Walking Dead, like we, the guys like. <laughs> We were really like, no one, like, we should have, like, dirt and crap on our face at all times. Like, smell. I would, I would come home. Yeah. I would come home from work and I'm like, I look terrible. <laughs> but it's a zombie apocalypse. Yeah. I just wish there was one scene dedicated to someone being like, and maybe there have been, I can't remember, but just one scene where someone, like, walks into a, a room and is like, Jesus, it smells bad in here. But maybe after a few years, you just kind of get used to it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe someone stopped up on deodorant and that was a hot commodity in the zombie universe. Yeah. I know people who like were legitimately rewatching fear season one when COVID really? was starting because it was like, kind of like, shit, is the military going to take over? Like what's happening here? Like, it's pretty wild. Some of the comparisons of how it played out. Oh man. I love season one so much. Like I, so I, good. Think, I think they knocked it out of the park. Season one was just like, every episode was so cinematic. Like it looked like the shots were beautiful. The lighting was awesome. Like I, I really, looking back on it, I'm super proud. I'm super proud of both seasons, but like season one was just, in my opinion, it wins. <laughs> yeah, and it was a tight uh, season. I probably, it probably could have been eight episodes, but I, the six episodes were fine. Um, they really told a story. I think most se- most seasons should be like eight to 10 episodes. I feel like the 16 episode thing is like, you are really stretching the story a little bit. And there's always the episodes that are like a little fillery, you know? I think, I think that's the way it's going in anyways with like all the networks. Yeah, I think that that's true. The six, the six, like even like four to six, like I think that's the way the future of, because people are, there's so much content to, to watch and to binge. Sure. That they're like, all right, I'm not going to watch 12 episodes of this and then watch 12 episodes of that. Um, I think they're trying to find that happy balance of when people check out, like from an ana- analytical standpoint. Yeah, I wonder where our TV is going. Like, do you have any insight on that? I know you have like a production company. I mean, most of the buyers we're, we've been talking to, I think it's all streaming at this point. Um, the, 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 you know, we haven't, uh, you know, we have, a, we have a show coming out on Netflix in October. Mm. Um, you, you, what, what, what will happen is these streamers, you'll go out, you'll do something, and then they'll, they'll, they'll purchase it. So like, sure. you're, you're, I, I don't really know. I think the, the box office is just going to be like tentpole movies, like Marvel, big action movies. Yeah. Um, cause, cause the streamers, the Netflix is everyone's looking for content. So mm-hmm. I think you're going to see way more originals from like Amazon, Hulu, Netflix, um, just cause they're going to want to, you know, get it to their platform. But then what they're doing is they're doing limited releases. So that does give them like a cool little runway to go, a uh, couple weekends at the box office and then sure. walk uh, exclusively on, you know, my streaming platform. So I, I think, I think um, streaming is going to be the future. I really do. I don't know if they've done studies on it, but like for me and all my friends, usually like when stranger things will drop and the whole season comes out at once and you watch it in like three days, a few weeks later, I probably couldn't tell you most of what happened. And I need like an extensive recap when the next season comes out. But like with WandaVision, you have a week to process it. That's a great yeah. point. I wonder if there's a correlation between memory loss of binging something and then just like watching it once and then abstracting it and thinking about it for a week. That's great. Yeah. I'm- I think there is. That's I don't know. I like the weekly structure. I do too. I know the, I know the, um, I forget who said it, but, um, the average like attention span is like on Twitter and Instagram. It's like two sec, right? It's like two swipes. Dude, second. yeah. <laughs> so going back to fear for a little bit, let's talk about your death. Was that your last scene actually? Yeah, that was my, yeah, that was my last scene of the series. Wow, um, that's and, rare. 
yeah yeah it's kind of strange but um they they plotted it out that was i believe that was my last day um you know it was a it was a kind of a it was an interesting day um you know uh i was actually really grateful cliff cliff, was, cliff showed up on set to surprise me it was his and he showed up on screen and um you know again took me under his wings and we, we hung out for a bit but um yeah that was a, that was a very interesting day um kind of gloomy but at the same time exciting because that you know yeah. it freed me to go do other stuff which i i booked another show right after that um another franchise. agents of shield I know, I know, I know. That was Star that Trek, was, Walking yeah. Dead, Marvel. Like, come on, man, you're killing it. I know. I, I haven't really actually looked back and thought about it in that way, but yeah, man. I mean, Agents of Shield was awesome, and that was a nice little break going from like crazy scheduling and in, in like a zombie universe to like a you know network show. It's just different. It's a um, little bit laid back, and um, the cast was awesome on Agents of Shield. Well, yeah, the, the, the back to your original question. That, that was an interesting day. I don't, I don't know if I'm happy about it. I don't know if I'm sad. Like, it was just like a... You got pretty like, scraped up too, right? Oh, yeah. And I was like, we did not put stuff on my arms. Like, I punched through the front glass. Or did I go through the glass? I, I was like... Trying to remember. Army in that car accident. War in, in Rosarito. And then they did this crane shot. And like, it was like... It was, it was a... It was a for that one scene, there was a lot of work. We had to bring in a stunts guy to flip the car and all that stuff. Jeez. You know, I kind of have a theory, which I don't know if I'm crazy or not, that maybe I'll okay. run by you. Please, please, yeah. I don't know if my character's dead. Wow. Well, didn't you get shot in the head? But you don't actually see it. It's told to Oh, it cuts to black, head. doesn't it? Like, like if Ruben, like we all thought he was dead from a fire. Sure, sure. Like we don't actually see Chris die. Wow. Wow. It's, well, it's, it's, I'm here like, for this. Travis is like, you know, about to kill these kids. He's like, where's my son? Where's my son? Where's my son? <laughs> he does kill them. He rage murders them. Yeah, and he murders them. Um, <laughs> As like, you they do. Could have been, they could have been lying just to, to wow. like, like get this guy to like shut up. That's my like theory. Like you never really see Chris's, uh, like you, it's told through a third person story. Like you don't, <laughs> it's not, it's non-verifiable. That, that, this is, that's my theory that's this is blowing my mind um <laughs> this you know way, like, i'm not trying to like change the story or anything but like no i love know. it you never know it, there's a ton of people who still hold out hope that madison's still alive um because we never saw her like actually she was in the stadium fire and then it cuts to black and then that's the end of it so who knows um she's not dead not dead come on how do you kill her um but seriously how do you kill her i don't know <laughs> it must have been wild to watch it from afar after the fact and I don't know if you ever watched the show but I'm sure you sort of kept up a little bit with maybe some storylines or at least the actors um it must have been weird to see like how they switched showrunners after season three brought in all these new characters uh, crossed over Morgan and Dwight from The Walking Dead like it's a completely different show now like it's it feels it, like a different show it's surreal because like season one and two like when we were going to comic-con and like they, they teach you like what to say, what not to say. Like, yeah. Like if you were to ask me season one and two, like will the walking dead and fear the walking dead ever cross paths? I would tell you, no, it's never going to happen. <laughs> Absolutely and not. Just cause that's what we were told to say. Sure. Um, but like looking at it now with like the showrunner shifts and stuff, like, I don't even know what this, <laughs> like, it's like, I don't even know who's still attached. Like I know Coleman and Alicia are still on the show. Yep. Um, I, I did not. And Ruben. That. Oh, and Ru yes, that's right. Yes, and Ruben. Um, I, I, I didn't see, like, I, I couldn't predict that. I could not predict that. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I knew, I knew, I knew Frank was definitely uh, going to leave the show <laughs> eventually. Yeah. Uh, but, like, I, I didn't see any of this coming. It's wild. I mean, you look at the poster for Fear the Walking Dead, and it's Morgan Jones in the center. You're like, what? This is crazy. Like, yeah, but it's cool. I mean, like, I mean, it is cool. Yeah, they, they, sure. found a, they found a formula. It seems like they have great showrunners on the show right now. Yeah. Um, so I, I think I think, you know, they have the talent and the cast there and the creatives, the producers behind it. I mean, it, 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 how can you screw up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, I have a question about the boat that you guys were on in season two. Was that just like, were you in like a uh, studio, like or a stage or was that just okay yeah, so obviously you weren't like in the ocean but no well we were next to the ocean actually oh, okay uh, we, were, 
we were actually James Cameron uh, set up the Titanic soundstage in Rosarito, Mexico. What? Uh, at the, yeah, at the, yeah, at the Rosarito Studios. Oh, maybe um, I did know that. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah so we, we shot uh, interiors in the studio there and then all the stuff on the boat. Um, what was the boat's name again? I, um, oh, uh, Abigail? Abigail, the Abigail. Yeah, the Abigail. <sighs> yes. Good job. Thank you. Um, they, they built a fake boat and it was on wow. this like platoon and mm -hmm. it was actually logistically really awesome for us for shooting yeah because we need to flip the camera angles they would just flip the boat the other way mm -hmm. and um we spent a lot of time on that boat yeah uh, i know i i wish we had a little bit more time at that plantation because that was kind of your herschel farm sort of thing like it was so interesting i was like i i look back at it it was only two episodes which is wild i was like oh, oh wait i want to it felt like a lot longer as an actor, like because uh, we spent a lot, of time, a lot of days on that boat. Um, yeah, I bet. You know, the funny thing is, they they um, the the water that was in this the the huge stage or the yeah the, the water. Um, sorry, mind blanking. They that was all seawater from the ocean. Whoa! So it was freezing. <laughs> like, I yeah, bet. Frank and I had to do some scenes in the water, like us jumping off. Or, uh, my character goes and jumps off the boat, of course. Sure. These were yeah. Um, and, you know, takes a swim in the ocean. Oh, my gosh. Um, and then Frank jumps in to, um, to save me. Right. And then there's zombies in the water and everything. That was so cold. <laughs> so we would have um, life, life, or, um, wetsuits underneath our clothes. And um, that, was, that was a fun day. <laughs> wait oh sorry i am now like getting like a flashback of season two when yeah. you when your character was caught in the room with alicia and madison when they were sleeping do you think he like what do you think was going on there because i think fans are still confused about that like were you gonna kill them or was that just you like just walking in the room with a knife like what was going on there because that put me led to your exile first of all they put me in like such an awkward situation for my yeah. character to be in so like as an actor i like the way the, what they told me because i was like i had that exact same question you know i was like what are my what is my character's intentions in this scene yeah uh and and what they told me was it was i was not gonna kill alicia okay. so then as an actor you're like why am i having a knife and i'm going in a room but i'm not gonna kill her so it was uh it was kind of a weird like oh huh? like what oh. <laughs> just in a room with a knife um and i think everyone hated my character even more after that scene um, yeah, that was confusing. I was like, what is Chris doing? Is he going to just kill them like right now? Like, this is wild. Maybe he should, you know, it would have been better if he attempted to kill them. Yeah. It, it would have been better if like he's going like this and she, Madison wakes up and she like kung fu's my hand out. Ooh, and yeah. And then that propels me to leave the group. Nice. I'm going to write that fan that fiction. Been, that would have been better for my character arc. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Sorry. we'll redo it. We'll do the what if series for Walking Dead and we can. Yeah, yeah, we can add that in. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So <laughs> you get Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. afterwards and they didn't they sort of like say, all right, well, it, like they kind of offered you the position, but they're like, all right, well, like, can you do it? Kind of like, is your character getting killed off? Like, what was that like? I just let my agents handle that. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I don't know what to say. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, yeah, you're right. We had to word it. I, I honestly, I think we were... I think I did, did I speak, did we speak to the producers of Fear? I, there was a way where we could say that I could do it. Um, okay. But I couldn't say that I was dying on the show. I could carve out some time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but no, I got three weeks. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think, I think there, no, there was a way I, I, I didn't have to lie. Like no one lied. They just said, hey, Lorenzo can, is available. He's got time <laughs> off uh, indefinitely and can do this role um wow. but yeah that was awesome that was like a fun um I, I still you know gabriel luna meeting him he was awesome oh yeah um and he's just crushing it right now he was the terminator and i think he's doing a movie with pedro pascal right now sure why um, not so that was that was awesome like going to going to shield and talking to those guys it was pretty cool it's gotta be ghost rider's brother i mean that's pretty cool I know, I know, and <laughs> and even I, I just can't stay away from blood in my acting career. No, no, <laughs> you cannot. I got, I got there is a lot. Shot up and yeah, we got shot up and like the car spinned and then I'm I even came out of the car <laughs> in in Agents of Shield. That's right. That's right. Who shoots someone in a wheelchair? That's just 
that's just rude. Um, unbelievable, unbelievable. But you know, you really do have a lot of range. I mean, and then you're you're in, you mentioned Kevin James earlier. You know, you were in Paul Bart too, and then you were in Kevin Can Wait. Like, what's what what are the main differences between working in a drama and a comedy? I mean, in my opinion, and I think most actors might agree with this, is comedy is way harder than drama. Ooh, okay. Um, anyone could be sad. Anyone can emote. You know, anyone could do these things. Um, yeah. But comedy, the timing in comedy is like, you can't teach that. Like, it just, sure. it's so natural. It's so, um, to me, like, because I've never really done comedy until I did Kevin Can Wait. Mm -hmm. um, I had so much fun doing it because, like I said, Kevin is just incredible. Um, sure. So, like, feeding off of him, like, my, my my main goal was like he's 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 the star you know i want to make if he's funny then i could be funny so like my main goal was like make him funny you know like yeah just set up the jokes and let him yep. do the, the rest um like pass the puck and then let him score um so nice. like that oh was, a, a little hockey reference i like that we're going back to your childhood that's nice yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, throw a little alley-oop and let him dunk Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like, you know, my, in my opinion, comedy is way harder. Um, it, it's way more, you know, you, you have to be funny. Like if, sure. you, if you look at comedy, like you have to be funny versus mm -hmm. like drama, you know, there's not as much pressure because it's the nature of the film or the show. Everyone's acting the same way, you know, in a sense. Um, so yeah, I would say, I would say there's much more pressure going from drama to comedy Right. Um, it's also really exciting because it's something, you know, as a dramatic actor, I've never been able to have the opportunity to do. So I'm like, I want to, I want to keep on doing comedies. It's, it's, it's so much fun. Right. So um, if people haven't seen it, you were in a movie uh, directed by your brother. This is a year uh, yeah. that came out last year. That is very exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah. what was it like? That must've been an interesting environment. Executive produced by Selena Gomez. You know, you had, uh, Jeff Garland in it, like so many amazing people attached to this. What was that experience like? That was, that was just, you know, we, so our company produced that as well. And, and one of our, one of our partners in our company is my dad. Um, uh, my dad, oh, yeah. from, uh, producing so my dad went from real estate and then did, went to real estate to, um, producing. So as you do, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we got to do that as a family. Mm -hmm. um, and that was just surreal um, to be on set. My dad behind camera, my brother behind camera, um, us actually making something happen. And, and you know, it's funny because like, <laughs> you know, when you're when you're siblings, you can talk differently to each other. So like, sure. like when you're around a director, um, you know, you wouldn't say the things normally you would say <laughs> yeah. uh, to, a, to a director. Um, but no, there was no, there was no real, there was just fun sibling banter going, you know, David's like, all right, Lorenzo, you got to do it this time. I'm like, dude, I did it great. <laughs> um, you know, we, we a little bit more pushback. Up. Yeah. We would tease it up a bit, but I think, I think, um, you know, on these independent films, it's almost like the, 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 the biggest enemy is time. Cause you're on a certain budget. You have to fulfill your day. Um, so, you know, Dave, David could, I think, rely on me in a sense, cause like he knew I had to just do it, do the, you know, I couldn't mess around. I couldn't screw around. Like he was able to just say, Lorenzo, we've got to get this done. Right. Um, so, um, there was a lot of that, um, that happened. Um, but he, he crushed it. He knocked it out of the park and, and, you know, we, we did have a theatrical release last year. Um, we had like 800,000 screens and then COVID hit and, that sort of ruined our, you know, just changed the dynamics of what we were going to do on a distribution standpoint. Yeah. Um, and then one of our main partners on the, on the film, he's like, you know what, let's, let's do like a COVID relief event and like benefit charities, benefit yeah. COVID relief. And let's do like a one time window of an online release. Mm -hmm. And we did that. We did that in like a two month span we 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 created the app or not the app we created the website we we assembled the team in charleston south carolina um we did all the what the, the the development and then boom we hit a date and we did a live uh premiere and um we actually i, I can't say who but we actually just we, it, we just did a district we have a distribution deal in place that's going to be coming Ooh. out oh that's so, exciting all right yeah, well, everyone look out for that yeah, it'll be out there for everyone this summer. Um, 
with a with a distribution in place. So yeah, excited for what that's awesome, man. Yeah, um, what's it like? still being able to play a teenager um for the you you were you were like playing the same age as you played like six or seven years ago it's wild oh man you know i i, I tell you know it's funny because i'm i'm married you know married i'm 20 you have kids i was looking at your instagram i was like holy shit this I, is... yeah, I, I, I have three three boys um it's wild i'm in like this weird acting stage right now where like i could still play like maybe senior but like definitely college maybe a senior so funny yeah but i'm like i'm a 27 year old man that just wants to play adult adult role and i can't yet dude uh so like i told i tease my wife all the time i'm like my career is gonna really take off when i'm like 38 or 39 yeah then you can start playing 22 year olds yeah uh yeah, exactly. so I, it's a it's like the ralph macchio thing he, he he was playing karate kid when he was my age 27 Dude, what is with child actors like drinking from the Paul Rudd like fountain of youth? Like, what is that? Like, how is that like the case for most of them? I don't know. It's weird. And I'm like, <laughs> I kind of want to look older to play like cop roles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there like a moisturizer thing? Is there like some tips and tricks? Like, no, no. It's just a lot of alkaline water. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Okay. Alkaline water. I'll write that down. Yeah. Wow. 9.5, man. You got to get on that alkal alkalize your body. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> so, um, what is, uh, what do you see for yourself, uh, going forward? Obviously, you know, you have your company, uh, you're still doing acting roles. Like, do you, do you want to do both? Do you want to switch more to like producing? Like what, what do you want to do? Yeah. I, I think I, I mean, our, our dream like is to be like uh, the next Amblin or like the next DreamWorks. Like we want to, like we, what we did was we went from like a development company, like this small mom and pop shop, we sold a show to Netflix. We have a movie coming out this summer. We're, we're doing another movie this summer again. Um, like we, we really see ourselves and myself as well from an actor. Like we want to become like a little mini, mini studio, like a mini major or like what, you know, Ben Affleck and Kate, you know, Lucy Affleck and like Matt Damon, like they did it. Um, they were able to- The Duffer brothers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think, I think, you know, acting's great. Like I love acting. It's my, my, it's what I'm good at. Mm -hmm. um but you know producing it is so fulfilling and to create something from nothing and then make it happen and and you know the the industry's in this weird flux from an actor actor's perspective right now i i, I kind of feel terrible because there there's not a lot of roles out there right now because of the covid restrictions and like the you know pilot season there was no pilot season for actors right really, there's weird flux right now going on um, but I think, I think there's starting to be light at the end of the tunnel with that, um, especially with the numbers dropping in California. And I, 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 I see a hopeful future. I'm excited to see what your next projects are, man. Thank you, man. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah. We have a show coming out. The, the announcement's coming out uh, next month, but, um, Hell yeah. it's going to be, um, a show on Netflix in October that we produced and, um, keep a lookout for our movie. This is the year it's going to be distributed this summer. Hell yeah, man. Well, I can't wait. Uh, thank you so much for talking to me, Lorenzo, and uh, hope to talk to you sometime in the future. Good luck with everything. Awesome. Thank you, Johnny. All right. And that was my interview with Lorenzo Henry. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Make sure you check out his movie when it comes out. Uh, I think that news will be coming out shortly, so excited to watch that. Also, for next week, will we be on? Will we have an episode? You know, I really, really hope so, guys. If not, I will just tell you guys on Twitter, so make sure you're following us at The Walking Dead on Twitter. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me through this. I know it can be frustrating. It's frustrating for me, too. I want this to be as consistent as possible. But anyway, you guys are the best. I will see you, hopefully, soon. Oh, and happy birthday to Nate.